Hey beautiful people, how are you? My name is Connor, thanks so much for watching this channel. This video is just gonna be a life update video. So if that doesn't interest you, that's totally okay. I'm gonna keep making the other content, keep bringing it out. But I used to make a lot more videos with life updates or like what's been going on in my life. And it's been a super long time since I've just sat down in front of the camera and shared in that way. And it's just feeling like the time, the time to do it. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna jump right into it. I think the most, the biggest thing that, I haven't actually written the title yet, but I assume I'm gonna write something in there about babies, making babies. Um, <clears throat> I wanna address that right away so that you're not left hanging. And also, it's the most exciting thing to me in my whole life that's going on right now. So it makes sense that I would talk about it first. Brittany and I are totally making a baby. We are doing it. We are in, we are there. We have arrived and we are doing it. And we actually made a whole new YouTube channel dedicated to what we're, we're calling uh, Connor and Brittany Family and Lifestyle so that we can talk about the all of it, you know? And we've noticed that sometimes people get pregnant and they don't tell anybody for like three to six months, you know, until they feel like confident and, and sure, like this is a settled thing. And that really makes sense. Um, and also we really want to share the whole experience throughout, you know, the beginning, the middle and the end and then beyond. And so this is part of that process. And uh, yeah, if you have more interest in that, we just have like a handful of videos over there now, but I will put that link in the description box and you can check out that channel. But let me just tell you a couple of things, like what this means to me in my life. Um, I have wanted to be a father for so long. And I had, if you've seen any of my other videos on, or you know about my past existence, um, I was in the same monogamous partnership from the age of 16 to 28. And somewhere pretty early on, I knew I really wanted children. And it was my assumption that that would always happen with that person. And I really wanted it. And I got the sense, yes, they really wanted it, but they also kind of were putting it off and putting it off. And, um, man, when we separated, yeah, it was just, it was something that I, it came with me, that desire to have children. And I also knew that I wanted to reformat my partnership. The person that I wanted to have a child with changed for me in my mind. I hadn't met the person yet, but in my mind, I was starting to develop this understanding that not only do I want to be a father, I want to be a great father. And I don't even, I don't even want to use the term father really, because like that doesn't resonate with me as much as a caregiver. I want to be an epic caregiver. And part of me being an epic caregiver is finding another epic caregiver to, to do that with. And I do have a desire to create from my own biology, my own DNA, my own offspring. And the idea of adoption is exciting and it's also a really different thing. And I think it has incredible, gosh, it's just an incredible journey, the journey of adoption. And that may be something that I look at later on down the road or at a different segment in my life. But right now what's really exciting me is creating something with my own biology. And that has been so, like a call inside of me that has not gone away since it was first kind of, first, first come into my consciousness, maybe around the age of 22. But when I separated from this other partnership, I recognized that to be the type of caregiver that I really want to be, it required me to find another type of, of potential caregiver that was also looking to be an epic caregiver, you know? And I found Brittany and we talked about children right from the beginning and it wasn't something that we, that either of us wanted to jump right into, but it was something that we both wanted and knew that we wanted. And our ideas on how we wanted to do that were, were very similar right from the beginning. And now that our relationship has developed, our partnership has developed, we have developed as individuals, I could not be more thrilled and more confident about 
the other caregiver, future caregiver, that I have chosen to create this biological offspring with. I'm, I feel not only incredibly blessed, but also really proud of myself for making the conscious effort to find Brittany and to develop that partnership to the point where now I'm just like, I, I'm totally pumped about bringing a small one into the world with her <clears throat> and just feel so, again, like just so confident about it. Um, yeah, it feels, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I cannot express how much is in there for me around this subject. It is by far the biggest thing in my life and I've always felt that it will be the biggest thing that I do with my life and that feels epic that's my choice it doesn't have to be that way for everyone that's not a requirement of even being a good caregiver or anything like that that's just for me that's it's big it's really really big yeah so we're in the throes of that um <laughs> And that's, I mean, jeez, I could just shut the video off now and feel like that's pretty much what's been, what's going on in my life. It's that big. But there are some other things, and uh, you know, since we're sitting down, I have all the space and time in the world right now to share with you. I think it'd be fun to just continue to share with you. And um, there has been one like cool thing recently that that I've been able to do, and. I'll give you a little context. Right now, we are in the Northeast. We're in Rhode Island. I'm actually at Brittany's dad's house, and she's out with uh, meeting up with some family. And so I have this this space myself, and I'm just sitting here like reflecting. And I used to live in Massachusetts, which it's different than Rhode Island for sure, but they're also very similar in a lot of ways. And so when I come to Rhode Island, I feel this nostalgia of that other life in Massachusetts where I lived for 10 years, 11 years, yeah, 11 years. And I had a house and I had a rental property and I had like a dog who unfortunately went missing and it was just very heartbreaking. I had different like cats along the way. All of them have since passed. Um, I had a partner. I had my own business. I had this whole world is what I'm saying. Like this just this whole infrastructure of an external world, but also an, an internal world that existed within that infrastructure that was in Massachusetts. So when I come back to Rhode Island, I always feel the remnants of that. And it's been really nostalgic for me. And at different times, it's felt m more intense or less intense. And this time coming back here, I have felt very connected with that old life and I have felt a missing of my property that I used to own and that like some parts of me regretted letting that go and and some parts of me some parts of me want to live here even though I don't actually want to live here for a lot of different practical reasons but parts of me you know what I mean still love the feeling of living here that nostalgia that memory there is magic in the northeast and, and part of that magic is uh for me winter and fall and cold things and a bit of desolation during those times bit of <sighs> silence spaciousness even but a lot of these elements are things that I don't actually want to be living in full time anymore. Um, they, you know, I, I have another life. I have other excitements that are more, I uh, maybe a little more like up here in terms of vibration and where I was at was a little bit just lower, you know? And not like one is better than the other. We may think that up here is, is, oh, of course, it's up here. It's going to be better. But that's, I don't equate it like that. I think my life in Massachusetts, which was more maybe down here, like more grounded, more rooted, 
uh, was was no better or worse than where I'm maybe living now, which is a little more like I, I like to get things done, I like to be out in the sun, I like to meet up with people, I like to go dancing. In Massachusetts, I like to go into the woods. I liked watching the snow come down. I liked watching the river. I liked being by myself. I liked drinking a lot of booze. <laughs> And all of those things, you know, have their own beauty about them, for sure. Especially being by the river and getting into the woods and watching the snow come down, in particular. But even even drinking a lot of booze can be a really beautiful experience. And I don't think one experience in life is better or worse than any other. But where do we really want to be, you know? That's a question that we can constantly be asking ourselves. And it will always be changing. The answer will always be changing. And nostalgia is this interesting space where we remember previous answers. We even feel previous answers. We feel the spaces of those previous places where those answers were truth. So, I love it up here. I feel very nostalgic. I feel very, very... There's a sense of sadness up here for me that also feels very beautiful. And letting go of my house was a conscious decision that I made. And it's one that sort of haunts me just a little bit or has haunted me just a little bit. I hadn't, I haven't fully integrated that whole process. And like changing spaces even from this area and moving away, it all happened in a, in a pretty small amount of time. My my wife at the time separated with me. It wasn't my choice. I then like quit drinking, quit doing drugs, quit eating everything except raw foods, switched right over to a raw foods diet. All of this stuff was within one week. So once I decided I was gonna quit doing drugs and quit drinking and switch over to a raw food diet, that happened in seven days. That was maybe two and a half months after my wife separated with me. Then I went to Thailand shortly after that. I came back to Massachusetts, packed up all my stuff, and moved to Santa Barbara, California, and I was there for over a year. And so all of that, like, there was a lot happening, as you can imagine, emotionally and, and, and spiritually, mentally. And my external space shifted very quickly. And I, it makes sense to me that I never, fully integrated that whole process. And so I think pieces of me have sort of stayed here and kind of like clung on and, and held on tight because this is what they know and they, they weren't really brought with me. So, recently, um, Brittany did this awesome thing for me and rented this house in a really small town called Bernardston, Massachusetts. It's a little bit north of Greenfield. My rental property was in Turner's Falls and my house was in Belchertown, Mass. Uh, which is all within the Amherst area. So we basically went to this house and we had it for a few days. And during that time, we had an opportunity to just drive around to these old places, to my old stomping ground. I went to the rental property, I went to the old house, I went to the Quabbin Reservoir, um, I went to Amherst, I went to Greenfield, the Greenfield Co-op where I used to go. I drove these roads that I used to drive all the time. I drove past my old university at UMass. Um, and I'll tell you what happened. Everything became integrated. And even right now, things are still processing and still landing and still integrating. But it was like immediate. I mean, I, I did all these things. I went to sleep. I woke up and I was just like, whew, so much more wholeness inside of my system. Just being able to see where I used to be through the eyes of this present system. It brought those two worlds together and the nostalgia is still there. And my fond memories and, and, and the desire to get back into the woods and watch the snow and be near the river. I mean, those things haven't gone anywhere. But I understand it all more. 
now. I feel much more centered, much more clear with what this, this place really is to me on my time map and what it means to me now. And I think the reality is that I, I'm absolutely in love with the Northeast. I'm really in love with Massachusetts. And it also doesn't quite serve my lifestyle anymore. It wouldn't make sense for me to still have property here. It wouldn't make sense for me to try and live here again. Uh, to visit, yes, and I have tons of opportunity to do that. But to stay much more past that, it, it really doesn't make sense. And I think some parts of me that felt like, oh, well, maybe it still makes sense, um, have integrated and feel like a letting go, a holistic letting go, and a filling in the blanks. Like, what, whatever happened with that property? What does the Quabbin look like now? What is, like, does UMass still exist? I mean, just things that, like, parts of me can't know or couldn't know without having the context that was created recently. So it was a profound experience, truly. And that, we just got back from that trip uh, just, a, just a handful of days ago. And I'm still integrating, I'm still processing, but I'm just feeling so grateful for that time. And it was really like, she, she totally went out of her way and created it for me. And I'm, and I'm just like, again, I'm just so grateful for that partnership. It's phenomenal. So yeah, thanks for letting me share that. Um, moving on from there, basically what I can tell you is that I'll be in Rhode Island for another week. I'm just soaking it up here. I'm really loving the weather. It's definitely turning into a bit of fall and that's exciting. I love fall. I'm working on a few different projects. Business is really exciting for me right now. Both my individual stuff and my business with Brittany. Uh, working on eating one meal a day, you know, and, uh, and all that that has to offer my system. Working on the, the meditative qualities that that protocol asks for. Being more present with my life. With the feelings of attempting something pretty epic. And that's how I would describe it. You don't have to describe it that way, you know, but that's, that's how it feels for me. That's my reality. It's like, I'm really working on something pretty epic here. And it's a big deal and takes a lot of energy. And it has a lot of influence over my day to day. And it's totally worth it and worthwhile right now. And I'm, and I'm really loving it. And I'm just going to keep doing, like, keep tweaking, keep experimenting, and keep you posted. We're going back to Austin, Texas really soon, and we'll be there for over two months before we go to Thailand. And in Thailand, we'll be there all of December and all of January. We've got our, um, our Thailand retreat coming up in mid-January, followed by Fruit Winter Festival that we host. It's a donation-based festival, so you can just show up and bring your beautiful self and hang out with us. Or, if you're interested, you can check out the Thailand retreat. We only have a few tickets left, so um, by the time you see this video, maybe they won't be there, but for right now, they are. And if you're interested in joining us there, we would love to have you. Um, oh, and then, yeah, so then after Thailand, coming back to Austin and pretty much, like, settling there, really digging in deep. And we'll see, you know, where we're at in the pregnancy process at that time but it could very well be that we are we are very pregnant and underway and it will be a, a very good time to root down a little bit more and i think austin is the place that we have decided is gonna be it for us oh. in some ways when i make these videos these just like sit down here's my life videos i i literally feel like i could just go on forever um and that feels really nice and comforting. I think that that speaks to the audience that I've cultivated and it speaks to you as, you know, the person receiving this video that I feel very comfortable just sharing literally anything about my life and I feel like I could just keep sharing and that's excellent. That's a, that's a great, great feeling on my end to be a part of and I just really thank you for showing up and <laughs> caring. It means a lot to me. But I think I will leave it there, um, and and it, it it will be interesting for me to just see 
what kind of feedback I get on this video compared to some of the more recent ones I've been doing and see if this is something that we can keep uh, tapping into, you know, and returning to these kind of life update videos if they're going to be, I guess, well received or, or wanted at this point which I feel totally open to like maybe they won't be and that's that's okay with me and just all an experimentation but you're watching it right now you're receiving it and I thank you for that so so much love to you I hope you're doing awesome in your life take great and good care and I will absolutely in one way or another check in with you soon Mwah.